The next property we're gonna be looking at here is the CFG scale. And I'm gonna start the video by sharing some insights, some practical insights about how you use this parameter when creating art. And then the rest of the video, I'll give a, a little more technical explanation of how it's actually implemented for those that are interested. So CFG scale has got this kind of rough name, classifier free guidance is what it stands for. And if we go over to Dream Studio, the way they describe this parameter is that the CFG scale adjusts how much the image will be like your prompt. So increasing it is supposed to make the image more like your prompt. And sometimes you'll, you'll find that to be true. Um, here, try to generate Bob Ross riding a dragon. And for uh, relatively low CFG values, seven, nine, there's clearly some problems here. We've got no dragon head, just two tails. Um, 11 is getting better, but we've got this second secondary giant afro in the background. And then things are looking a little more sensible here at, at a value of 13. So um, thir 7 to 13 are typical values for this parameter, but you're always welcome to explore outside of that. There's, it's, you know, I can never say that, um, that it's a bad idea to go beyond any of these value ranges because you never know what you'll get really. Uh, but just to give you a starting place, this is kind of the range that I typically see used. The description they gave of this parameter in Dream Studio is really generous because it implies that the, the model can really understand your prompt perfectly well and you just got to adjust this scale slider to determine to what degree it listens to your prompt. And I think what you'll find instead is that no matter how much you try to over-specify what you're looking for, and no matter how much you, you push this scale value up, it'll feel like the model's being stubborn and, and not actually listening to you. <laughs> but I don't think that's what's happening. It's, it's not that the model is ignoring your request. It's that I think it's, it's just that it's not quite capable of, of generating what you want. So for example, uh, I really liked this seed this uh, image of a horse in an apocalyptic wasteland and i wanted eight legs um, but turning up the scale doesn't seem to get me any closer to having eight legs it's stuck at four and i think in in uh, stable diffusion 1.5 quantities are kind of a problem it, it can be really hard to force the model to generate a specific number of things so uh, CFG scale isn't necessarily going to fix that. I think a more valuable use of this parameter than trying to get the model to generate something that it just really isn't very good at um, is that it, it can be a great way to create some artistic variation around a seed that you like. So something that's become standard practice for me that I've, I've learned elsewhere is when you found a seed that you like for what you're trying to generate, you can generate a, a grid of a uh, combination of steps that we le just learned about, and then also different values of this scale parameter. And you can see that it, they're pretty similar images, but also uh, significantly different. And so it's kind of a, a cool way to, to get some different takes on this, this base image. And yeah, I think that's a that's a common way to, to actually make make use of this. And I'll have to give a, a tutorial on this this auto one 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 notebook. That's where this was generated because um, it is such a valuable tool. Uh, but briefly, the way to generate one of these grids is to go into the script section. Um, kind of looks like Control Net is the header there, but it's it's not. There's a little script box here, and if you uh, press the down arrow on that. You can do a XYZ plot that'll generate grids, and then you can specify the parameters that you, you want in the grid. So here I did steps on the x-axis and uh, CFG scale on the y, and that created the, the grid that I put in the slide there. As I started to record the material that I have for explaining CFG scale from a little bit more of a technical perspective, I realized it just doesn't belong in this video. So I separated it out into its own video. Feel free to check that out if you're interested. I'll put the link to it in the description. 
And I think we'll move on now to the final parameter that we have some control over, which is the choice of sampler.